Hi, I'm Mona, and if you're here, you found Kaleidoscope Dreams Tarot. Today I'm going to do a pick a pile reading. I have three piles. This is pile one, pile two, and pile three. Um, today's question is, why does it seem my life is crumbling? Okay. Now, I chose to do this question, not for me, but <clears throat> because I happen to be a person who enjoys going on Quora and answering questions. You know, I like to do that. Um, and it just seems like there's so many people who are sat on there in certain situations and, you know, feeling like their lives are not good and how do they get out of this phase and that phase and the other. <clears throat> so I decided that I wanted to make this video to, you know, help anybody out who might feel like their life is crumbling and there's no hope, but you know, there always is hope, right? There's always hope. You just have to, you know, be a little more positive about yourself. You know, my favorite thing to tell everybody is love yourself first. You know, it seems that people don't know about this concept. So, you know, but these are the three piles you have to choose from. Okay. And the question again is why does it seem my life is crumbling? Okay, so um, if you need more time, please go ahead and pause the video and um, take as much time as you need. Um, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe, like, comment, and share these videos because somebody out there might need this, you know. <clears throat> I also did want to mention that I do have an Instagram now, finally. Um, it's kaleidoscope underscore dreams underscore tarot if you want to check it out. There's not too much stuff on there yet. Um, I do have a couple of sayings and things that um, you know I put on there and a couple pictures of you know random stuff but um, yeah with that being said I think I'll go ahead and get started. Okay and I'm gonna start with pile one. Okay so here is pile number one and the question was why does it seem my life is crumbling? Well, let's see. <clears throat> First we have, okay, we have Coco Pelli. This is the bringer of the harvest. Sorry about my fingers. I was painting. So there's like, you know, they look, they look dirty, but they're not. It's black paint. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, but Coco Pelli is the bringer of the harvest. Okay. You know, um, it's like a uh, mythological creature, I guess you could say. And um, usually they, you know, this this figure plays its horn and, you know, notifies everybody that the harvest is coming, you know, and, and, uh, and such, you know. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and find out why does it seem like your life is crumbling, okay? So first we have the moon, okay? Next, we have the Two of Swords. After this, we have the world. Next, we have the Ten of Swords. The King of Swords. The fool. Okay, let me see if I can make some space here. All right. Okay, so let's see what we have going on so far. Okay, let me just get a little closer here. <clears throat> All right, so we have the moon card. And it seems that, you know, there are some secrets. There could be some secrets that you're holding inside, or there could be some secrets that are going on around you. Okay. And in this card, I can see that we have a woman. Okay. We also have uh, some wolves in the background. So there's like uh, there's like three wolves there. Okay. And this person is also holding a stick with flames coming out of it. 
it could be a wand type of thing. But it seems like <clears throat> there might be a woman in your, your surroundings. She might be she might be holding some secrets that you don't know about. All right. Maybe some secrets that are, you know, making you feel like, you know, there's something sneaky or negative going on. She's got three keys on her um, belt also. So she could be holding the keys to something, <clears throat> your home, your car, you know, a safe, whatever. But she's, she's holding secrets nonetheless, it seems. <clears throat> okay. This could also be you holding these secrets. Okay. Doesn't have to be somebody in your environment. This could be you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. We also have the two of swords. And, you know, this represents, you know, trying to make a decision. All right. Trying to make a decision about something. And you know what? I've never noticed on this card, but this card also has some fairies that are um, floating up from the um, from the flowers. But it looks like their bottoms are up. Okay? Like they're flying towards the woman. So these could be, um, you know, spiritual beings, you know, <clears throat> that are flying your way. Perhaps they're coming towards you to help because you're having a hard time making a decision about something. Maybe it's involving this uh, this woman. <clears throat> and we also have the world card. And the world card represents pretty much having everything your heart desires, you know, everything you've ever wanted, your happiness. So <clears throat> you might be trying to make a decision between somebody who's holding secrets and having what it is that can bring you, you know, everything your heart desires. Okay. You could be this woman trying to make a decision on a gentleman, right? I do see that the, the sword is kind of pointing uh, towards this card because, you know, maybe, you know, obviously this is a negative energy here. We also have the Ten of Swords. So you could have been deceived by somebody, backstabbed, just like, you know, somebody just wanted to just take everything from you and, you know, they might have said some bad things, they might have stolen from you, you know, but it's just left you down, you know, like, ugh. <clears throat> this could also be affecting the, uh, um, what is it, solar plexus chakra, you know, your, you know, your solar plexus chakra. And that would be like, you know, the, um, the sexual organs. You may not be feeling to do that right now because you've just been hurt by this person. Perhaps you're with somebody and you don't even, you know, get intimate with that person. You could be the king of swords or holding that energy. You could be very defensive right now because of whatever has happened. Okay. You do have some dogs right here. Maybe they are protecting you from certain things, you know. And we have the Fool card. So <clears throat> what I see right here is you need to make a choice between either moving forward in a different direction or staying with somebody or, or in a situation that has, you know, to do with lies and deceit and, you know, hidden things, secrets, right? But just know you can have the world and, you know, make the right choice because you're in store for the Ten of Swords energy. 
people stabbing you in the back. Perhaps you're not learning from the past, right? That could be it too. And you could be holding the King of Swords energy, very defensive, you know, arguing and, and you know, in your head a lot. And just if somebody comes to you, snap at them, you know? And you want a new beginning. This could be something that you tried to have a new beginning and, you know, all this has happened. You Maybe you thought this was your world. Maybe you thought somebody was your world and they weren't because they ended up stabbing you in the back. So now when anybody comes in and they approach you, you're defensive and you snap at them. You know, you've got words to say to them. Yet you stay in your head a lot because you're not sure what you should do. You want a new beginning, for sure. Let's find out what's going on. What else we got here? <clears throat> All right, we have the Five of Coins. We have the Faith card. We have the Five of Swords. Well-deserved reward. Believe and succeed. And Solar Plexus. Did I not say something about that? Mm -hmm. Yep. And normally I don't really say that anything about the, the chakras because I have a hard time remembering. Like the main ones I remember are the heart, that's green, the the red is the um, sacral, and I, I remember the uh, the well. I guess I do know a lot of them, but. The, the solar plexus is not really something that I usually talk about because it's one of them that I, for some reason, I seem to forget. But for some reason, today, I remembered it. Hmm. That could tell us something, right? All right, so let's see what's going on here. So, you know, with all this going on right here in the top row, underneath the um, moon card, we have, we have the five of coins. Okay. Um, you could be dealing with a Taurus. You could be a Taurus yourself. But secrets or things that, you know, that have been kept hidden have left you out in the cold. Right? Perhaps it's what's what these secrets are that's, you know, left you in that situation. You know, we have this woman here. And, you know, it's, it's hard to tell if she's even holding a, a child because it looks like what she's holding, it looks like, it doesn't even look like a child. It looks like she's trying to hold on to her light, right? It actually does not look like a child. It looks like she's trying to hold on to a light and she's asking for, for money. So maybe somebody has stolen your light, right? Somebody is stealing your energy. But you still try to hold the faith with that, you know, with this faith card here. And there's that Taurus symbol again. All right? <clears throat> you may be doing a lot of praying, you know? And not to anything specific, but just generally praying. Because, you know... We have this Five of Swords here, and, and that symbol there is an Aquarius. So you could be dealing with an Aquarius. And the Five of Swords is just, you know, arguing, bickering, fighting, just not getting along at all. All right? You could be dealing with that person and thinking that, um, or you thought that that was the way to go, that was the path to take, but I think you know... I'm not sure that that was the right path. This person has symbols on their fingers, the sign of Taurus. We have male symbol, female symbol. We have um, Jupiter. Gosh, I don't... I've seen those other symbols, but I, you know what? Yeah, I like to look in the book for these cards because there's so many messages in these cards. These cards are um, tarot of dreams, by the way. Um, let me see. Let me see what these symbols mean really quick. Maybe I can come up with something because there's a page that has all the symbols. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, where is that page? Esoteric symbol systems. Okay, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. Okay, so, yeah, they got all kinds of symbols and stuff. So let me see if I can name off a few for you. So this is Mercury, okay? And um, it also says this is representing the Magician card. So somebody might be a manifester here. Somebody might be dealing with whatever's going on in Mercury, right? And, of course, we said Taurus there, okay? And then we had a little Jewish symbol or Hebrew letters because this card has a lot of Hebrew letters in it. And that is the symbol for faith. Yeah, basically the word there, faith. Okay. And then we have that uh, other symbol. It's uh, the Venus symbol, Empress, Venus. Oh, okay. So this could be a woman, a woman Aquarius who is in your life that is causing, um, you know, problems or you're not making you feel too great, right? So next we have nine, okay, this nine card. And it says, uh, well-deserved reward. So maybe you're trying to um, have faith in something. Okay, you've been put out in the cold because of secrets. And what's happening here is you're needing to make a decision and you're trying to have faith in a certain situation, a situation, you know, that can bring you the world. But there's somebody holding you back and that's what this could be. This could be the Empress uh, energy of an Aquarius. Okay, and your well-deserved reward will come after you make this decision because the universe is hoping you make the right decision. You know, you make the right decision, you can bring the you can be the one who brings in the harvest for yourself, right? Like Coco Pelli, bringing in the harvest, bringing in your finances, bringing in your happiness, bringing in the world, right? We also have believe and succeed. So you might also be, you know, praying and hoping that a certain situation is going to come to fruition because, uh, you know, you might not be feeling so good about it, right? And it also kind of looks like there's a boat right here, you know? There's a boat right here, and it looks like you might be the driver of the boat and you're headed somewhere. Where? Who knows? Only you know that. Um, I do have the book for this also. Let's find out what the solar plexus chakra card is real quick before we move on. Let's see. Let's see what that says. Okay. Hello. Sorry, you guys. Let me just find it. I know I should probably be prepared, but mm, I try to go off my intuition to begin with. But, you know, like I've said before, if I'm going to look in the book, I'm going to look in the book. I'm not ashamed to do that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the chakra cards. Here we go. Okay, that is 163. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Open right to the page. Don't you love when that kind of thing happens? Okay, so it says... Solar plexus chakra, yellow. The sound is ROM, you know. Element fire, okay. Um, pancreas, adrenal. And the key word is I can, okay. So you might be kind of thinking that you can't do this. You might be negative. You got to stay out of that negative mindset, okay. So you're, you're probably thinking a lot of negative things because negative things have happened to you, like this Ten of Swords, you know. And let's see, it says the solar plexus chakra is located above the navel area and just below the rib cage. It represents power, vitality, willpower, self-esteem, and confidence. The chakra is associated with the clair, clair, clairsentience, inner feeling, which is the major psychic reception area. Okay, so you might be starting to follow your intuition, okay? 
And that, that would be like, you know, that gut feeling, inner feeling, right? And it says, it says that you need to start following, or it doesn't say that, I'm saying that, that you need to start following your intuition more and thinking that you're, you're not, you might be going through something right now and you're not sure, quite sure what it is. And, and it might even be a little scary to you, but you know what? I think what's happening is you're going through some sort of um, a realization about things, about life, about how life has treated you thus far and how you are just going through life and just thinking, gosh, what is this? Why am I thinking this way? Why are people separating themselves from me? Why are these people keeping secrets? Why are people backstabbing me? Um, you know, why am I so defensive? Why have I been put out in the cold? Okay. I think what's happening with you is you might be going through something that people, some people call enlightenment. Okay. You might not be too familiar with it. But maybe you should look it up and, and find out because I do see well-deserved reward. And there's a man standing here. And you see, he's also got light just coming out of him. This could be you out in the cold protecting that light from people who want to take it from you. Right? So don't be, you need to separate yourself, I think, from people that no longer serve you. Okay, something I did a long time ago. I realized that a lot of people around me were so negative and they weren't giving me any confidence. No matter how hard I tried or if I asked for help, nobody wanted to help me. Nobody could be found, you know? And when I did find them, they were kind of negative, putting down what I do, talking things behind my back. It's not very nice. But I just let it go, you know. You gotta let stuff like that go. You can't let it bother you. You just gotta move on with your life and you just gotta separate yourself from all these negative people. And, you know, I'm thinking that you might be going through something. Perhaps your crown chakra is opening up because in, the, I don't know if you can see, but in this picture, there is like, you see the light is just shining all around from him. People don't like that. People don't like, like when your light shines and you see there's a light beaming out of his head. So that could mean that your crown chakra is starting to open and you are starting to maybe communicate with, you know, a higher source. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, kind of keep it to yourself because people kind of will think you're weird or something. You know, they won't, they don't, they won't see things the way you do. The only people you can really talk to that about is people who are like you, who have, you know, these kind of things going on in their life, too, who's have some, who, who have had some sort of realization in life, right? So basically, you know, when it comes to why does it seem my life is crumbling, I think it's because you're starting to feel things inside that you really can't discuss with anybody. And, and what's happening here is the universe, God, or whoever it is that you pray to, right? You pray to somebody. Even if it's praying to your angels or your ancestors, they're trying to give you the message to really follow your instincts, your gut instincts, because these things are not good for you. And what they're telling you, you need to separate yourself from all this negativity because you're going to always constantly be put out in the cold. People are going to turn their backs on you. All right. There might be a certain individual in your life who's holding secrets, who's causing issues, making you stay in your head about something and preventing you from moving forward. Maybe they're, they're putting you down and, and you're not able to believe in yourself to succeed. But, you know, the universe is saying that you will gain this well-deserved reward because you will start following your solar plexus chakra, your inner gut feeling, and you'll be able to move forward. You might be at some stage in this, okay? But this right here is the ultimate. This is the end stage. And it's all good. It is all good. 
okay? Look at this, three, six, nine, all right? You might want to look up something about Nikolai Tesla. I think he says something about those numbers. I could be off a number, but I, for some reason that came to mind. So you might want to look that up. We also have, if you add a six and a three, what do we have? Nine. So we have two nines there. You are coming towards the end of a cycle, a, the end of cycles, okay? You might be coming to the end of many cycles. And it, that's why it might seem like your life is crumbling because all these cycles are coming to an end in one big clump, you know. Usually we go through cycles, we go through one at a time, whatever, you know. But you seem to be getting them in one big gnarly just clump right now. So <clears throat> what you need to do is, I mean, this is just my opinion here from what I see, because I am just a messenger. I am not the all, one all solve everybody's problems, you know, because nothing is absolute. But we can do, what we can do is just suggest what, what it says here. You know, whichever stage you're in in this, you need to have faith and you need to, you know, start realizing that the divine is communicating with you. All right. You can get this communication through sleep. You might get epiphanies. You might get numbers. Look up numbers, angel numbers. You ever see it's like 1111 or it's, you see, look at the clock. It's 222. Look up those numbers. Those are messages for you. Okay. If you don't believe me, Google it because I mean, you can Google any number and they all have messages. I, you know what? When I started going through this, I could not believe it. I had never in my life ever thought to look up a number, but try it. The next time some number comes to you, look it up and see what it means. It's really gnarly. You know, you can look up nine, you can look up nine, nine, you can look up three, six, nine. 963. This is actually going in a, in a, it's going kind of descending order. Okay. So they might, you might be going in a descending order because we're starting here with the crown chakra. Your crown chakra might be opening and, you know, messages are wanting to come through, but you're not, you're not using your, your gut instinct. Maybe you're not a, believing it. Maybe you're afraid of it. I was, I was definitely afraid, but you know, as you start to look things up and, you know, think about stuff and you get curious, you start looking things up on the internet, you start watching videos about ancient Egypt or whatever happened back when, or, you know, Atlantis or just all these crazy videos. And you're just like, oh my God, what is this? And why am I looking these things up? You know, it's because you're being drawn to do that. But just believe that you can succeed in whatever it is you're doing. There might be a lot of people putting you down, saying you're never going to make it. You know, don't listen to those people. These last three cards are messages from the divine telling you, hey, you can do it and you deserve it. You deserve this well-deserved reward because we believe that you can believe and succeed. You know, you can do this. Follow your intuition, your gut feeling. And you can be like Coco Pelli. You can be the one who is the bringer of the harvest, the bringer of your own harvest within, right? <sighs> yeah. If you guys want to know about a really gnarly video, look up uh, on YouTube, uh, Spirit Science. And it, it's really interesting. They have this one video on there. I think it's like an hour long when you have time, whatever. But that was like one of the videos that somebody brought up to me. And I was shocked when I watched it. And I was like, oh, my God, it's called Spirit Science. And I think it's History of the World, you know, condensed or something like that. If you want, you don't have to. It's entertaining. It's a, it's a cartoon, too. So it's very simple to understand. OK, anyhow, let's go ahead and move on to the second pile. And uh, just remember, subscribe, like, comment and share. We all like that. And uh, for this, you know, card readings, I think somebody out there might definitely need this to give them that vote of confidence to move forward. Okay. Uh, let's go to pile two. Okay. Pile number two. Um, why does it seem my life is crumbling? 
Okay, well, let's find out. What is this? Oh, okay, it's the deer. It's hard to see. Can you see it there? Yeah. And you know, the deer represents sensitivity and um, sensitivity and peace. Okay. So you might be a very sensitive person who just wants a little peace in your life, right? Because you're here watching the video, why does it seem like my life is crumbling? Maybe you just want a little peace in your life. Maybe you can't have that right now. You know? Oh, this card should be on the top. I put it as a second card because I didn't want you to be deterred from using your own intuition because it's the only card that does this. This deck is kind of offset a little bit, but that doesn't matter because this deck was meant for me because I'm a little offset myself, but I love myself nonetheless. But we're going to go ahead and get started and see why does it seem like your life is crumbling, you know? You might be sensitive and you might just want a little peace and let's see what the cards say. Okay, we got two of pentacles. We have the three of cups. <clears throat> we have the four of cups. Next here we have, let me just make some room here. I had to do that last time. I don't know why I didn't remember this time. Okay, we have the uh, ten of coins, ten of pentacles, the three of coins, And the Ace of Coins. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to put these here. We're going to work on what we got here so far, okay? So what we have here, we have, there's somebody who's juggling, right? Somebody's juggling. Um, you could be juggling life between family and job, relationship and job family and relationship, but somebody's juggling here. So you might have a lot on your plate right now, maybe, right? And, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you're juggling relationships, but, you know, you've got two things going on for sure. I just noticed something. Let me take a quick peek. All right. There is a ship in the background. This, this boy... You know, there's a ship back here. I don't know why, but it could, you know, ships, you know, usually signify, you know, some sort of travel, right? Maybe you're juggling two ideas, right, on what you should do. We also have the Three of Cups, and we have three women here. We have three women it seems like they're all getting along, right? Or, you know, they could be, you know, there's... One is looking at the other. One is looking to the right of another, down on the floor, and one is looking straight ahead. So what I'm thinking is, there could be a little jealousy in this situation. There could be a little... Ignorance, like not ignorance as in not knowing, but ignorance as in ignoring. And there's another person with a different colored rose in her hair, mind you, a white rose. And this could be a friend. These could all be friends of yours, but maybe... Because, you know, the Three of Cups represents celebration. But... It doesn't seem like we're celebrating right now because our life is crumbling, right? Isn't that why we're here? Our life is crumbling. So this could be some uh, a few women who might be plotting. There might be two women plotting and one woman not because the white rose represents friendship. Or these could be people who you thought were your friends, right? Think about that. Think about your situation. And then we have the Four of Cups here. And the Four of Cups here is like making an offer. Somebody's making an offer, you're making an offer to somebody, or somebody's making an offer to you. But you don't seem to care too much about that offer. Why? Because you're thinking about something else or someone else, right? Somebody is making an offer to you, and you're looking at these three cups. 
Why are you ignoring somebody making you the offer? Are these three cups, these three women? Are you juggling these three women? Okay. And somebody is there, looks like she's waiting. She's trying to give you a cup and she, she sees that you're not paying attention to her, but she's waiting. She's patient. It's not like she's trying to wave her hand in your, your face or anything like that. She's just waiting. And this is a mermaid. <clears throat> we also have this ten of coins right here. So you could be a person who is financially stable. That doesn't sound too much like crumbling. Maybe not financially, but maybe other things around you are. We have three of coins. And you could be working with others at this present time, maybe with these three women, because I see three women right here. Perhaps you're dealing with three women who are working together to take your coins. That's a possibility too. Take it how you will. Because you've been juggling so much, maybe you're juggling women. And it's bringing your pentacles down. And these women are plotting on taking your money. Maybe because of juggling. And whose fault is that? Right? Just saying. We also have this ace of coins here. Maybe you want to start a new financial beginning with somebody because maybe these women have already taken your coins. Somebody's making an offer to you. You're not paying attention. Maybe you're upset about what these women did to you, right? Maybe they've taken your money and you have somebody here offering you a cup, but all you're doing is thinking about, oh, what was me? What have I done? Because of all of your juggling. Maybe this woman is the same as this one trying to start something new with you, but you're too busy crying about what you've lost. That's a possibility, too. Let's see what else we got. All right, so next we have the Seven of Wands. Next we have the Palace of Cups. Oh, I know these are going to have a hard time fitting, so I'm going to have to overlap them. Okay, you guys. We'll check on those little symbols, you know. And then we got uh, the Magician. <clears throat> okay, next we have Detach. All right. Somebody's got to detach from some peep throat chakra. Well, I can already see what the story is down here. New vitality. At least in the end, you get new vitality, okay? At least. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. I kind of see a little bit already what's going on. Hopefully you guys do too. All right. I'm going to just do this because the symbols, the symbols, this, this deck has like symbols and I like to see them and look them up if I need to, which I'm going to need to. So, all right. <clears throat> so in the next row here, so this is something that could be possibly happening right now, the first row. So let's go to the second row and see what's happening. We have the Seven of Wands, okay? And the Seven of Wands can indicate either, you know, you dealing with a lot of other people and their back talk about you, or, you know, you could be defending yourself because of, you know, maybe rumors and gossip by people, you know? Rumors and gossip that have led you to losing money and finances and stability. All right? This could involve a Leo. You could be involved with a Leo, trying maybe to defend a Leo, or a Leo is spreading gossip or something like that, right? Or you could be a Leo trying to defend yourself, that too. And then we have this Palace of Cups. And the Palace of Cups is like a place of like emotion, you know? Maybe in your home, you know, there's a lot of emotions going on there. You go home and what do you deal? We got to deal with emotional people. Or maybe you try to go home and try to find emotional stability with someone. And maybe you just, you know, it's too hard to get because you're constantly trying to defend yourself. 
You know, maybe people are saying things about you and you're constantly trying to, you know, defend yourself so you can't get an emotional happiness at home. Maybe you're having a, an issue with the people at home or you're, you know, it could be a, a, a relationship you're in or something like that, right? And then we have the magician. So you could next tr be trying to manifest something good out of a situation that's just gone wrong, you know? since you're trying to figure out why does it seem like your life is crumbling. Well, I think it has to do with juggling and three women who might have, you know, done something to take your finances away. And I'm sorry if that did happen to you. But we have this final three cards here. The, the final three cards here, it seems that these are the cards of, of what can happen if you make the right choice, All right? I think you're trying to manifest the right choice right now. I think you are the magician, and you're trying to manifest the right choice for yourself. Okay? Maybe you're not getting emotional fulfillment at home. Maybe you're constantly having to defend yourself because of a certain situation. Could be involving these three women. Now, these three women could be in your family. They could be women that you were dating who are, you know, they get together and they're like, whoa, you're seeing him too? So am I, and so am I, you know? Well, let's make a plan. Let's work together because he ripped me off or she ripped me off and let's go. Because, you know, like I said, this could be three women and you can be this juggler, but you can be a female watching this. You could be the juggler and these could be three men trying to take from you or family members. That can happen too. So just take it in your own situation how this is working out. But just know there's somebody trying to offer you something. You're not seeing it right now. They're trying to offer you financial security. They're trying to balance you, ground you, put you in a good place in your life. But you're just not seeing it right now. These are stages, I think, that we're, you're going through, okay? Um, with this last three cards, this is what's happening. <clears throat> the divine is telling you, God, universe, ancestor, spirit, you know, whoever it is that you pray to, whoever it is that you believe in, because this is the 11 card, which is a master number, which represents, you know, enlightenment. <clears throat> Maybe you become enlightened to something. Maybe you see all this going on. Maybe you see what you have done to cause this. Perhaps it is your doing that this is happening. You know, we're, all, we're not all perfect. Things happen, and you know what? Some of us are raised in a certain way where we just don't know. We don't know. We weren't, you know, told this. or We just never, you know, had to deal with it in this way. But, you know, when we do this kind of thing, things that are deceptive that we think it's okay and it's really not maybe your whole life you thought it was okay to be a certain way but it's not maybe you're come to coming to the realization that whoa i think i've been doing some bad stuff to people i didn't realize it at first i just thought it was all about me but it's never all about you it's all about us because we all are equal no one is better than anyone else okay Sure, maybe somebody's been in school for so many years and they speak eloquently or they are have this book knowledge or whatever. But you could be a person who has that street smart that this person will never experience because you've been through it. through You've been dragged through the mud. Things like that. There's different kind of intelligence and we're all at different levels. But you know what? We are all the same. We're all going to die the same. We all bleed the same. We all feel sadness the same. We all feel love the same. What's the difference, right? We're all the same. No one is better than anyone else. We're just at different stages in our lives. And what I see here is, it is you know, the universe or the divine or whoever is speaking to you through these cards is trying to tell you to detach from past mental thoughts, you know, past mental ideas or, or, you know, past ideas of thinking that 
this person is better than that person. And, oh, that person speaks this way, so that means they're smarter. No, not necessarily. Okay? I don't know how to fix a car, but there's people out there that do. Does that make me dumb? Okay, maybe I went to school and I learned about all kinds of science stuff. Did that person who's fixing the car do all that? Do they know about, you know, do they even know what DNA stands for? Right? No, they might not. They might. <laughs> you never know. But they might not. So you can't really judge like that. So maybe the universe is asking you to detach from these old ideas, right? And perhaps also you need to speak up. Your, it seems your throat chakra might be a little blocked. <clears throat> Okay, sorry about the fingernail. I was painting you guys. <laughs> it's not dirt, it's paint. <laughs> but um, it seems that, you know, because we have the number five there, the number five is a number of change. You need to change how you speak to people, poss possibly. Maybe you can't speak properly to people. Maybe you can't speak your truth. Maybe you can't speak what you feel. Or maybe you speak harshly, which kind of pushes people away. Right? But you need to detach from the idea that anybody or this person or that person is better than the next because they're not. We're all the same. We're just at different levels, that's all. Or we're on different, we have our own different intelligence, you know, but we can bring it together eventually. But everybody's on a different path, on a different stage, has different knowledge about this, that, and the other. So you cannot, you know, you cannot base you know, life on, oh, this person's better because they know this, or this person's better because they can fix that. No, it's just not how it is, okay? It's not how it is. I don't know how to explain any better, but that's just not how it is. You know, at the end of the day, we all go home, we all have dinner, and we all go to bed. You know, that's how it is. We all use the bathroom. We all get up in the morning and we do it all again. We all do the same thing. We're all the same. But I'm thinking that the universe is saying is once you detach and you realize that we're all, you know, the same, that no one is any better than anyone else, you need to shift that mindset. You need to think about the way you speak to others, okay? Maybe you speak abrasively. Maybe you speak very softly and it makes people think that you're weak or something because people are dumb and they, they think that it just because you're nice or you speak softly that you're weak and that's not true. Okay, you just have a different demeanor, that's all. But maybe you need to, uh, maybe you need to talk more. But definitely you need to change something about your communication. All right, you gotta change something about it. Maybe you don't communicate enough. Maybe you have a hard time communicating, but you need to fix something that has to do with your throat chakra, okay? Because in the end, you're going to have a new vitality. Once you come into realization of this detachment, speaking your truth, maybe manifesting whatever it is you want for yourself, then you're going to have a new vitality and you see this person is blowing the flu. It's like a new beginning in life. <clears throat> that's the number one okay so we have 11 5 that's 16 1 is 17 you never reduce the master numbers and just that's why I added it up that way so this is basically so it was 11 16 17 1 and 7 is 8 maybe you'll realize this in eight days right maybe you'll realize it in eight weeks Maybe you'll realize it in any eight months. But if you can realize whatever's going on as soon as possible, you know, try to reduce it to eight to eight weeks. It just really depends on what stage you're at. If you're at this stage, maybe you can reduce it in eight days. Realize. You know? And by the time you get here. All your chakras are going to be open. You're going to be able to speak your truth. You're going to feel freedom. You're going to feel freedom within. Do you know how wonderful that feeling is? It's just, it's something that you can never imagine. All right. <clears throat> so, let's see. 
Oh, let me look up these symbols real quick. There's only three that I want to look up and tell you. This might mean something to you, and it, oh, it's helpful. Okay, so we have that is, let me see. Where is it? Let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. This symbol in the book, it says it's a symbol of Mars. And when it comes to the um, major arcanas, it's the tower. So something is going to come to an end for you and a Leo, maybe. Or you might be that Leo bringing something to an end. Maybe you're fed up with all the defensiveness, having to defend everything you say. Somebody being defensive with you because they're not being honest or something like that, right? Upside down triangles, that's water. And then we have, let's see what that other thing is there. Okay, Mercury. Wow. Oh, yeah, okay. Mercury, magician. Duh. Anyways, so you're trying to manifest something, okay? And you can. The way you manifest something is to detach. And what is that little Hebrew symbol? Let's see. Oh, it's just the magician again. Okay, double magician. Oh, it means house, Beth, house. So you're, maybe you're trying to manifest something with your house, having a home. Maybe you left home because the Palace of Cups. Maybe, you ma maybe you're manifesting to have a nice emotional home, a happy home, where you can be, you know, emotionally open with the people that you are with. Because maybe you can't be that way in, at home. Maybe you can't show emotion at home or something. You can't be who you want to be because you're always so de having to defend yourself, you know. So that's, you know, that's basically... I like to look up those symbols sometimes, you know, if I can't figure them out. But that's basically what that is, you know, something with your home, huh? Trying to manifest happiness in your home. That's always nice, right? And I think you're able to do it because you're the magician. You just got to do these things. You got to detach from what doesn't deserve you. You got to do something about your way of speaking which only you know, because I don't know you, but it could be, you know, the what I mentioned before. And then, no, you'll have a new vitality. All your chakras will be, begin to open, and you'll be singing like this, you'll blowing that flute, you know, like the sky. I am not, you know, like, you know, like I told the other pile, I am not here to make you do anything. I am just translating the cards for you. You do what you believe, because this everybody's situation is different, but it can be like, this is general, you know, but it's only general to your situation and only you know what you need to do. These are just how you should do it or you could do it. You don't, you shouldn't have, you know, I'm not saying you have to do it, but it's just, you know, it's just to make you think, think about what's going on in your life. Think about what you could have. Think about what you lost, how you lost it. And you, something will come to light here, hopefully, okay? Just don't be afraid to speak your truth, this, this throat chakra, right? And when you do it, do it, you know, in a nice, calm, you know, rational manner, you know? Find somebody who will actually listen because it might seem like in at home you're not really having a good time trying to speak to somebody. Maybe no one wants to listen to you. And that's why it's so hard to speak. Somebody wants to speak to you, but it seems you're ignoring them. It's up to you. Okay? Remember, what was this? Peace, sensitivity, and peace. You're a sensitive person. Maybe you don't show that much, but definitely you want peace. Peace in your home, peace in your life, obviously. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and move on to the third pile and uh, hope this helped you guys out. Remember, subscribe, like, comment, and share, okay? Somebody might need this, all right? I'm trying to help you all out. All right, pile number three. Okie doke, so we're at the last pile, pile number three. Um, and you want to know why does it seem my, like my life is crumbling? Well, let's see if we can figure that out for you today, okay? And we have here, oh, it's a little dirty angel. My bad. I should clean her down. 
or him, him or her. And the angel represents, it's the, uh, it's the, uh, the angel of hope and wonder, right? Okay. Sorry, you guys, I was painting. I'm, I don't have dirty fingers. I was painting today, so. So, you know, there might be, your, your angels might be trying to uh, bring you some hope. You know, maybe you're wondering if your angels are around. They are. They definitely are. Okay. And they're trying to bring new hope into your life, possibly. All right. Let's find out what we have here. We have the hermit. We have the eight of wands. We have the Nine of Pentacles. We have the Four of Wands. <clears throat> we have the Ace of Swords. We have Judgment. Go ahead and find out what's going on with these cards first. All right. Angel of Hope and Wonder. So we have the Hermit card here, okay? And the Hermit card, this is a very spiritual card. This is somebody who goes within to find their answers. They might go and meditate. They might follow every little thing inside them that comes up, epiphanies, whatever. They find answers that way. They believe in that. Um, they believe in those, those things, you know, um, numbers, uh, dreams, epiphanies, answers to meditation. This person is a person. This could be you. You could be this kind of person who likes to, you know, go within to find the answers you need, right? We also have the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands represents um, messages coming in. And they're coming in quickly and they're coming in passionately, passionately. You might be sending these messages out to somebody, right? It actually looks like, gosh, does that look like it's coming towards or away? Okay, this looks like if you were to throw wands, you would be throwing them away from you, right? So it seems that you might be wanting to throw some wands towards somebody. So it might be you that's going to take a message or send a message to somebody, right? And who are you sending the message to? You're sending the message to this woman. And this woman is the Nine of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles represents a woman who is single, who is financially stable. She doesn't need anyone to support her, take care of her, because she can do it herself. That's a really pretty lady, too, on that card. <laughs> she's all happy and smiling. She's all she's all good. She's happy. She's got her, her dough. She's She doesn't need to worry about anybody coming in and, you know trying to offer, oh, I'll give you this, I'll give you this money, I'll give you that money, please to be, she doesn't need you. Look at that dress. That dress is hot. She wears dresses, she's got a big smile, and she's got all those pentacles. She doesn't need no one, but maybe, you know, maybe you want her to need you. Okay? Maybe you've gone within and decided, you know what, I'm just going to buck up, and I'm going to go and I'm going to send this woman a message, tell her how I feel, and see what she says, you know. Which is, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? Maybe you're hoping that she will accept. But if you, you know, if you don't send that message in, you're going to always wonder why. Angel of hope and wonder, right? <laughs> 
Next, we have the Four of Wands. So you could be seeing her as your Four of Wands, this person you want to marry and get together with and have a, uh, you know, an emotional life with because this card is green. That's like the green, the heart chakra is green. And you are thinking about something brand new because we have these butterflies here. They have just emerged from the cocoon and they are ready to start a new life, right? If it wasn't time to do that, There'd be little cocoons hanging around, right? <laughs> but they're not. They're butterflies. So I think, I think the time is just about right. And this is a ripe time, right? Get it? R I P E, ripe. And then we have this uh, Ace of Swords here. But there's always that. But <sighs> either you need to come in and tell the truth, or I think if you don't do the right thing, you know, this lady, she looks like she's ready to just cut you the hell out of her life if you don't come in right. She, she's looking like she's ready to do it. But you can come in right. Right? Because, you know, just think about what you say. Your pres it's all about presentation of the verbal, you know, communication. You can do this. Because just remember, judgment is going to be made on what you say to this person. This person who already has everything. What is something you know that she doesn't have that you can offer her? Maybe something you know about that she wants. Do you know? Maybe you feel like your life is crumbling because you can't move forward because you're nervous to approach this woman. Because you know you have to come to her with something. So you gotta say something right to her. You gotta say it right. You gotta come in with truth, because, you know, about whatever's happened. Especially if you want the four of wands. You wanna especially if you're looking at a future with this person. Make sure you think long and hard. Make sure you meditate extra if you need to to figure out what you're gonna do. But just make sure, you know, this lady's got everything. She's might be missing something. Well, she's single. Apparently she's missing something. She's already got the money she needs. You know. Don't come in all broke though. A woman like this doesn't want a broke fool. She wants somebody who is equal or more, right? She doesn't want to have to support anyone else. She's doing fine on her own. She doesn't need that. If she wanted, you know, somebody to support, she might find that herself. But she looks happy on her own and she doesn't want to support anybody. She's already got her own. So make sure when you do come in that you're able to you know, contribute financially. She doesn't want her money taken, right? No woman does. Just like no man really does. The judgment's going to be made on this situation, so make sure that you do the right thing. Make sure you think about it. Don't take too long, because a woman like this will be gone before you know it. Let's go ahead and find out what these next cards are. We have the Page of Cups. We have the Five of Wands. Ooh, we have the Death card. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see something here already. Nurture. Listen. Success and growth. Well, that's not too bad. The last three cards are always looking good. Okay, let me tell you what's going on here. So this is something that might be going on right now, this first row. Okay, just saying, right? You could be somebody holding the energy of the Page of Cups, all right? The Page of Cups also can be, but it's not, I don't think it's the situation because, you know, I think if it was this situation, there would be like a, a, a cup with a fish coming out, something similar to that, but there's not. I mean, usually that would indicate another child. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. I'm thinking that we are dealing with somebody, you, who has a hard time 
expressing their emotions. Right? Is that you? Only put it if it fits. If it doesn't, you know, this is a younger person and this is a young female. You could be a male watching this, holding this young female's energy, right? Maybe a person who is starting to uh, figure out their own feminine side and about emotions and stuff like that. You know, you could have, be a hard. It could be hard for you to express your emotions. It's you know you might just barely be coming into your female energy. We both we all have male and female energy. Okay, we can, women can be abrasive and women can be sensitive. Men can be abrasive, but they can also be sensitive. So just think about that. I'm not calling you a lady or a foo-foo or nothing like that. I'm just saying, okay, take that how you will. If you're offended, I'm only going to know that. Then obviously you haven't come into your female energy. And this is part of the reason why your life is crumbled. Okay, if you can't express emotion, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks for her, right? And if you want her... You better come into that female energy because she wants a man who's 100% if she's going to get one. She doesn't want a half man, you know. She wants a man who can deal with her male and female energies or their own, you know. <clears throat> All right. And then we have this five of wands. So, yeah. You want to come into this. You want to give that message, but you're in your head, I think, okay? The five of wands is, is conflict, having conflict with others or conflict with yourself, mental conflict. Because it, it looks like either the person, uh, you could have fire in your chart too. You could be a Leo or you could be dealing with a Leo. She could be a Leo. That could be it too. But... You want to come in with some information to this person. But, you know, like I said, the, the five of wands could be, you know, it could be these guys fighting all against each other. All right. But it, it could also be these guys working together. They're, it doesn't really look like they're hitting each other. They could just be like working on something together. Like they're all working hard at something or something. Right. But then also, like I said, you could be having mental conflict. You may be having a hard time figuring out, how am I going to do this? You know what? Yeah, think about it. Think about it. Come in right. You don't want to mess this up, buddy. Or but it. Whoever's watching, right? You know, you may just be barely getting in touch with your emotions or learning how to express them. So maybe if you do come in... <sighs> Maybe if you do come into this person, tell them, look, I'm still trying to learn how to express my emotions. Please bear with me. Don't have too harsh judgment on me because I'm trying to learn and I'm trying to do this. Right? You can do that too. And they, hopefully she will understand if you're sincere. Because this woman might be the Nine of Pentacles, but I can guarantee you. She knows a lot more than you think. You need to come in with the truth. Right? We have this death card here. Right underneath her. Either she she might have even, you know, the past may, may be haunting you. She might, or you might be a Scorpio. Might be a Scorpio dealing with a Leo. Or you could be a Leo dealing with a Scorpio. However, which way it ru it works, right? But we have the death card here. So maybe this is the death of the old you, right? You put the old you to rest. This, this person who is just insensitive and doesn't know how to show emotions. Or, or she may have put an end to, a situ to use the situation between you two in the past. And this is why you're having this conflict and wondering how you're going to come to her because of this, this happened, because this has happened. And you don't know how you're going to rejuvenate it again. You don't know how you're going to make it flourish again. Maybe it wasn't flourished very well in the past and that's why she brought it to an end. She seems happy right now. How are you going to make her happy in the future? You know, how can you make a woman like that happy in the future? 
you know? Because after death, there's always a rebirth, right? There's always some kind of, after death comes, a new beginning comes. But you have to tell the truth. You don't want to start a new beginning based on lies. You want to throw everything out on the table. Because she's definitely going to be judging you. Yeah. There's going to be some sort of judgment made. Judgment over a situation. We have two men down there. We have a woman down there. And then we have the woman with the wings up top. <clears throat> These could all be uh, angels and ancestors. This could be this. Be people, you know, what is she holding? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What the heck is that thing? Is that a horn? Looks like that might be a horn. You need to speak right to this person, you know. The horn is also another symbol of, you know, communication, you, you know, the communication of music, right? And don't be tell us, don't be playing songs on the radio hoping that she's going to understand that those songs are for her. You know, don't communicate to her with music. You can put the music on, put some love songs on, whatever, but when you communicate, you be direct and you use your words, you verbalize you know, because not everybody can understand if these, you know, if the song is meant for them or not, right? It could have just be you're putting on the radio, you like that song. It's going to go right over their head, you know? <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. Okay, next what we got here, we got the nurture card. And, you know, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe... You can have this four of wands, this relationship to move to a, a never le another level or start over, the, which can lead to marriage. But you have to nurture this situation. Maybe whatever has happened in the past is dead. And you got to start over and you got to nurture the situation. You got to nurture it like it's a baby. You got to baby it and you got to nurture it you got to water it like the plants and the seeds and to watch it grow and find happiness you also have to be you know even though you have to speak learn to speak maybe you also have to learn to listen because if you're somebody that speaks all the time and you think oh I'm right all the time listen to what I gotta say you gotta do what I say uh-uh that's when she's going to cut you out. If she's going to let you speak, then you got to let her speak, but you got to listen. Because I guarantee you, she's going to listen to what you got to say. She's going to definitely listen. Because if you're coming back after this, you better got you better have something really good to say to this lady. Right? And make sure when she speaks, you listen. Don't act like you're listening. Don't act like, oh, I don't want to hear this. No, you listen. It's two-way street here. If you want to have this, you got to have equal give and take. You got to nurture each other. She might have been hurt in the past. You might have hurt her in the past. Maybe that's why you're all scared to approach, because maybe you did hurt her in the past. She brought it into a situation, and now you're trying to, you know, start something new. Definitely going to be judged, but you can, you can have this, and it can be nurtured into something wonderful, as long as you can listen to her, too. It's not all about you, okay? It's not all about you, and once you do that, look, he's looking at the person listening, you got to listen. Show her. Well, look at, yeah, exactly. Look at her, too. When, this is a woman. Look at her when she's, speak, uh, when she's speaking to you. You know? She's going to be listening to you, for sure. And you're going to have success and growth if you can do that. 
Look at this kind of tree in the background here. It's starting to sprout the leaves. You're going to see it's not going to be as hard as you think. It's not going to be that hard. You know why? Because she'll make it easy. As long as you can do the right things at the, from the beginning, don't start a relationship based on lies. Tell the truth. Come in with the truth. Tell, tell her how you feel, what's been happening, what you've gone through, and what you want to have with her. A nurturing relationship. Equal give and take with listening to each other. And you will see the success and growth happen to you. This is a sign of Jupiter. Gosh, I think this is a sign of I'm thinking it's the symbol of death because when I when I looked at the other cards, they basically said that. <laughs> Let me take a quick peek. I want to make sure because I already forgot. Let me just make sure. And you know, the upside down triangle, that's water symbol, okay? We if you didn't know that now you do. Um, darn, I was wrong. This is Saturn, you guys. This is Saturn. Okay, Saturn. And look at that. You can ha That symbol for the Major Arcana is the world's card. You can have the world. Get out of your head. Know what you need to do. I'm sure it's gone over your head over and over and over again because these guys, I think they are battling, but they're battling the thoughts that you can't get past. Get past those thoughts. You can have all of this. You can have the world if you can get out of your head. All right? Let's find out what this symbol is right here. That was a Leo. We know that's Leo. Okay. And then we got the Scorpio. That's what they're, what's that Hebrew symbol? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, death. But they call it nun, and it's fish. Okay? Fish. Let me think about it. Fish, fish, fish. There's an abundance of fish. That's something that I don't quite I don't quite think that's the message though. Let me see. There was something that's that's oh I just got this you know what I just thought about? I don't know if you guys seen that cartoon Avatar, right? And then um in that in that cartoon, there's um God, what is the brother's name? Sokka. Sokka is the brother, okay? Aang is avatar, and then uh Sokka has a sister. I can't remember her name, but she doesn't have to do with the story. Sokka meets a, a, a young girl, same age, and they, they fall for each other. But she see, she's tense. She's like a special girl, like something, some sort of special girl, right? And she ends up, you know, going to the lake or the river or something where she, you know, something happens to her. And it's like saves the world or it saves the, the city or she saves something, right? This girl. And Sokka's all sad. Oh, my God, I loved her. This was the woman I had found that I loved. And she happens to be this person who's got to save everybody, right? But as she goes into the water to give herself to whatever, the fish in the water starts swirling, right? And as they're swirling... It's making the yin and the yang symbol. So I'm getting chills for that. So maybe I'm giving you a good example somehow. But this is this means fish. So I'm having the feeling that <clears throat> I think that if you can get together with this lady and you can combine each other, you know, with you can join each other with that equal give and take, that listening to each other, you know, caring for each other the same way, <clears throat> contributing to the relationship the same way, working together the same way. It'll be like that yin and yang. And then like those two fish that were swimming in the circle, like that cartoon, it's going to be like you're going to come together as one. And then that's when you have that union. You can have that relationship. You know? 
I love that cartoon, that Avatar cartoon, my favorite, one of my favorites, you guys. <clears throat> and there's so much that that cartoon teaches, but we don't even real, you don't even realize it. You can't, you know, you think, oh, it's just a cartoon for kids. No, 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 no. There's a lot more to that cartoon. Anyhow, <clears throat> I hope that this helped somebody out there. Um, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. This might help somebody. Come on, you guys. I'm trying to help you guys out. I don't have this. I don't feel like my life is crumbling. I'm kind of feeling okay. I'm kind of feeling happy. So, you know, give this to somebody that might need it. Because a lot of the, the readings I do is because I want an answer too. But today, for some reason, I felt like I needed to help you guys. So that's why I, I did this right here. Because I feel I, my heart is, is aching for some of the people, you know, because, you know, like I said, I don't know if I said that in the beginning or not or in, during a, one of the readings, but I like to answer answer questions on Quora, you know, and uh, well, you know what, I'll mention it at the end. I'll mention it at the end. I'll see you guys at the end. Okay, you guys, we made it to the end. So I was talking to the third pile about something and um, God, I, gosh, I, I already can't remember because I was shuffling these cards before. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was saying that, you know, I, I'm okay. I, I don't feel like my life is crumbling right now. But because, you know, I like to answer questions on Quora. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in one of the piles or in the beginning or not, but I'm just going to mention it again really quick. I like to go on Quora, and I like to answer questions to, to people who feel, you know, like, their life is so bad or their life is crumbling and all that. And I feel bad for them. I try to answer their questions. My answer to everything, of course, is love yourself first. You'll fi always find the answers. Once you start loving yourself first, you start to build boundaries for yourself. And once those boundaries come along, you're able to express those boundaries to others. And people aren't are going to be, you know, stepping all over you and stuff. You know, you got to put out boundaries when you're going to have a relationship. You got to tell the person how you want things and, you know, and, and they got to tell you the same thing. And then you come to a mutual agreement and everything's wonderful. Okay. And also I do have um, an Instagram, you know, I, I made it like a few days ago. I just kept forgetting to tell you guys in the readings, but it's under kaleidoscope underscore dreams underscore tarot. So if you want to find me on there, I have a couple random pictures on there, whatever. I have some sayings on there that I put on there that I try to say things to make people feel better, you know, to give them a little bit more confidence, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I want people to be happy, basically. Okay, so <clears throat> I already pre-shuffled these. I have the book here just in case, right? I'll refer to it if I feel like I'm missing out on some, missing something. I've already pre-shuffled these, like, I don't know, six or seven times. But I like to do it one time on camera so you guys know I'm not, not doing any kind of willy-nilly, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to split the cards into three piles, and I'm going to take the top card. One, two, three. Okay. That is the wisdom that we're going to get from this wisdom oracle god. Uh, Chakra Wisdom Oracle. Okay. <clears throat> Whoa. That there. Okay. So this is what kind of wisdom we got for us today for you guys. We have isolation, quest, impasse. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to try and tell you what I feel like it is. And then if I feel like I'm just not given a good explanation, maybe we'll get that. We'll look into the book. Okay. So it seems like you might be in, a, in some isolation right now. You might be isolating yourself from others, not talking to somebody or people very much. You may have cut them out, and this is why you are in this uh, energy. Hmm. I'm using the magnifying glass, you guys, trying to see if I can. Oh, my gosh. There's something written on that. His foot is on. or Actually, there's no foot there. But there's something on the floor, and there's something blue on the side. Blue represents the chakra, so you might have issues with talking. I, I You know, I'm feeling like 
This also looks like, this almost looks like a sword, you know, on the floor next to a bed or something, whatever that blue thing is. But it also looks at the end of it, it looks like a hand. But it in the hand, gosh, it looks like the hand is holding a, a piece of paper with two words on it. I really wish my, my sight was better. Night. I think it's actually upside down. Hold on. Oh my god, I'm having the hardest time seeing that. There's a message on that. There's a message on this. This white little piece of paper. Gosh. If any of you guys have this deck, it's the Chakra Wisdom Oracle Guidebook. If you're if your site is better than mine and you have this, can you please comment it below? Because now I'm just like all up in my head about that. I think one of the words is night. Night. Maybe it says night attire. I don't know. But maybe you're in isolation a lot. Okay. Maybe because it's a suit, maybe you will be wearing a suit somewhere. Or you'll be wearing night attire. To go, maybe you're going to go out somewhere. Maybe you're going to, you know, maybe you're going to go out by yourself. Or maybe you're going to, maybe you're going to go out by yourself. Or maybe you're going to go out with this person, just you and this person. Maybe you're going to go do something alone together, you know, candlelight dinner, walk on the beach, whatever. I'm going to check the book. You know, I feel like I have a feeling I'm going to anyways. But um, you might be in a, some isolation. You might be, um, you know, thinking about things, right? And maybe, um, you know, we have this quest card here. Maybe you're on a quest to some quest to enlightenment. Could be. All right. This woman, she's walking a path. So you could be starting to follow a path. I see this child here. I'm not quite sure. You know, but if that if you have a child, do not walk the path without the child, I don't think. Make sure the child knows what's happening. Do not desert the child. Let them know that you'll be back or whatever it is because it looks like this woman is walking the path and she's walking right past the child. So don't forget the child. All right? But you're on a quest for something. Maybe you're on a quest of enlightenment. Okay, don't forget to speak to the child. Okay, or or this could mean you're on a path, and you know don't pass up the child because this could be something you're passing up some childhood traumas. Also, that could be it too. You know, like if there's if you don't have a child or any have to deal with one, that's what that could mean that you are not dealing with a certain. Um, childhood trauma. That could be it, too. <clears throat> okay. Um, perhaps it has something to do with the mother that maybe the, the mother st stayed on the path but never stopped to give the, the child the emotional fulfillment that the child needed. And you could be that child. Whether you're male or female doesn't matter. Maybe you're on a quest of healing, right? <laughs> then we have impasse. So maybe you're feeling stuck right now, like you cannot move forward. There's something blocking you. This is what this might be. It might be you feel stuck and that you cannot pass through this. The guy looks like a darn terrorist or something, you know, but maybe you just cannot pass this because you have not dealt with the issues that you have with your mother. Let's take a quick look at what these words mean. I don't read through the whole thing. There's usually one little quick sentence that says something that kind of enlightens us all, right? So that first card, what is it? Isolation. Let's see what it says. Oh, there it is. Opened right up. I've got all I could ever need right here. So maybe wherever you're at, you're feeling fine. 
Okay, you're feeling like whatever you have, you don't need anything else, right? And this is, you're in isolation and maybe you're thinking, you know what, I don't need anybody. I'm fine here by myself. I just want to be by myself. Trust me, after a while, that, sh that will get old. I was going to say that S-H-I-T, but it'll get old. Because you're going to be like, you know what, gosh, I feel so lonely. I wish I had somebody. You know, what it, why, why, did, why did this happen to me? And this is why you could feel like your life is crumbling. You could be in this isolation mode. But just know, it, it's not... Have you ever seen that movie about... Gosh, there's another movie. I can't, I can't remember the name of it. When that guy goes and lives in the wilderness because he's sick of, uh, you know... Uh, he's sick of everybody, so he goes to live in, in, by himself and the, or tries to live by himself, and then he ends up dying in a bus or something, whatever. And, and he writes his, his memoirs. He writes that, you know, I like to be alone, blah, blah, blah. But it's life is not worth living if you can't share it with somebody, right? Something like that. If you guys know the name of that movie, please comment it below. But, yeah, you know, it's kind of like that. You know, sure, it's nice to be alone. But after a while, you realize that, you know what? I wish I had this time to share with somebody. Isolation sucks after a while. Okay, and I know. I know. Okay, next we have Quest. Oh, Gosh, they're just opening right up for me. And it says, the Navy Trail. Wow, what does that mean? When I am somewhere else, my life will have meaning. So maybe you're at a place that you don't like being at right now. Maybe you, the meaning to your life and your happiness is somewhere else. And maybe this is what you're on a quest to go find that happiness, okay? But like I'm saying... I think you have some childhood wounds either to heal or if you have a child, make sure you let that child know you're just going to check something out. You're going to try to fix things and you'll be back to come get them or you'll be back. Just keep the communications open with a child if you have one. Don't just up and go without telling the child anything. Okay? Make sure you let them know that you're not deserting them because that's what you could have happened to you as a child. Don't do the same thing to your own. You know, break that chain. Don't do it. Okay, just let the child know, look, I love you. I'm going to come back. I have to take care of something. Dad has to take care. Mom has to take care of whoever. Make sure you let that child know. Don't leave them in the dark. Okay, and then if you do leave, make sure you call the child every couple days so they don't, they're not in the dark. <laughs> Let them know that you think they're special, that too, okay? All right, let's find out what that impasse means. I mean, that's not like a message from the, I'm telling you that. Don't leave that child in the dark, all right? I'm just saying, it's not nice, okay? <clears throat> let's find out what this impasse is. Okay, where's orange at? Gosh. Oh, here we go. Okay, it didn't open right up to the page for me, but it's okay. Okay, here it is. Okay, this path is obstructed. Reroute. So, there's a reason why the, that you, um, there's a reason why you can't go a certain direction. Perhaps there is some healing that needs to go on. Whether you have a child or not, there's still some inner healing that you need to do. Because you shouldn't want to have to feel like you want isolation. Okay, communication with others, having relationships with others is very important in life. Okay, that's how we get along in life. That's how we move on with, you know, our lives are relationships, work, you know, whatever. You have to have some sort of relationship. You're not, you can't be isolated. You got to work. You got to deal with the, the community. You got to deal with the world. Isolation is not the best thing for you. You might think, oh, I'll, I'm fine right here. No, you're not. You need to share your thoughts, your days, you know, your interests, whatever you got to share with others. You have to interact. You can't be like this hiding away person and never getting out. You're going to hate your life. It's going to suck and you're going to you're going to grow old and you're going to think gosh, 
my life is coming to an end and I spent it by myself. I should have went out there and explored the world and enjoyed the world and shared it with somebody and had that love I should have had. Don't live in regret. That's what that'll do. It'll bring regret to your life. Okay. So this is why you have an impasse. You need to learn to communicate with others. You need to learn that not everyone out there is out to hurt you or out to burn you or rip you off. They're not. There's got to be people in your life that you know and trust that have not done that to you. Go to them. Find out some answers from them. Find out answers from people you trust. Maybe this is why you like being in isolation. Because you can't use your throat chakra because I noticed, you know, there's some communication issues with some of these piles. Maybe you can't communicate right, but anyone who cares about you, they're not going to care about how you communicate as long as you're not yelling and screaming and calling them names and using profanity and everything and getting all defensive. If you can talk normal and civil like a normal human being, <clears throat> then you'll be able to communicate just fine. Don't worry about your words. You don't need to, you know, be a scholar. I have that on my Instagram. Okay, just communicate the way you feel comfortable. They're not, no one's, if they care about you, trust me, words aren't going to matter as long as you can get your point across somehow. Okay, just make sure, you know, you're choosing the right direction. Okay, if there are things in your life that you know something about, you feel it inside and you just want to avoid it because of maybe something in the past, this is your impasse. You're not going to be able to move forward until you face your demons. Okay, the universe doesn't allow that. The universe makes you go take these cycles over and over and over and over again until you learn your lesson. And until you learn your lesson, learn to become brave, learn to speak the truth, learn to speak kindly, learn from your mistakes, learn from past mistakes, learn from past heartache, this guy is going to get out of the way for you. <clears throat> You're going to have the free road to walk through. And where is that going to lead you? It's going to lead you to happiness, finally. And you're finally going to have that happiness you always wanted because you're not going to find happiness here. Definitely not. <clears throat> so I hope that helped you guys. You know, me and my long drawn out readings. They're, and all they are are pick of cards, right? And they're like, <laughs> they're like 30 minutes each. Sorry, you guys. Almost 30 minutes, but... I'm sending out a lot of love to you guys. I'm sending out confidence. I'm sending out a feeling of abundance, that you can be anything you want to be, and you can have anything you want to be. And that includes a good, happy, abundant life with people who love you and a prominent future. Okay, I'm sending that kind of energy out. If you guys need it, grab it up because it's just for you. Okay. Please subscribe, like, and share. Like I said, after each pile, somebody might need this. Come on, boost someone else up. They might be feeling crappy like you are because that's why you're here. You want to know why your life's crumbling? They might too. Share the video. It'll help someone out. I'm sure it will. Okay? My name is Mona. You found Kaleidoscope Dreams Tarot, and I'll definitely see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day.